Hi, thanks for joining me today. I am so excited by the comments and all of the excitement I'm seeing and all the questions I'm getting from all of you out there. So I know that some of you are getting as excited as I am for August to get here and for us to do this challenge together. So as promised, today is prep talk number three. And today I'm going to show you what a day would look like on this way of eating. For those of you that haven't yet gotten to meet me, I am Jen Lee, and this is my Gentastic journey in semi-retirement. This channel has a lot of content. I am right now talking about our carnivore challenge. I also have videos on pet health, and I have videos on my favorite hobby, which you can see my craft area behind me is card making and different Friday favorites that I find. So things that just help me out in life and bring me joy. With all that said, I am here to talk about prep day number three. And this is just a prep talk about our carnivore challenge. So those of you that haven't seen the other two prep talks, I would encourage you to go to this link, which is prep talk number two, or in the description box below in the dot dot more that brings up the description box, you will see the playlist and the two prep talks that we've talked about. So I have a playlist called Carnivore, and then I've got the two prep talks linked below for you. And I would suggest that you see those in order first before you come to this video because I do tee it up and then I'm not doing a lot of repeating. So today I am going to talk about what we're going to eat in a day. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we are going to prioritize protein and then we're gonna use fat and a little bit of carbs for our energy. And this is gonna make us feel amazing. We're gonna feel satiated. We're gonna have energy. We're gonna have less aches and pains. We're gonna feel less tired. It's gonna be an amazing journey. Again, I am not a doctor, so I do suggest you go to a doctor before you start this diet. You have plenty of time because it's not August 12th yet, which is when we start our carnivore challenge. So all of these videos ahead of time are to get us prepared and get us enough information so we can get started with our best foot forward. Sorry, I need to interrupt this video. I don't want anyone to panic. This way of eating is supposed to be super simple and it can be. You don't need to track, you don't need to measure, especially in the first 30 days. So if you're completely new to this and you want it to be super easy, then just eat animal products nothing from a box, nothing processed, and you will do just fine. But I'm here to tell you that as you progress and maybe after the first 30 days, and as you're starting to binge watch other YouTubers that are carnivores or carnivore promoting doctors, you're gonna start to see a lot of conflicting information that I mentioned in my first couple of videos, and that's fine. But you may start to say, gosh, am I eating enough? Am I eating too much? Should I listen to that person that said I need more fat or should I listen to that person that says I need more protein? That's when this information will be super helpful to you. So this video is for when you're in doubt, maybe when your weight loss is not coming off as quickly as you'd like, or just when you're ready to take it to the next level, or you can just be one of those people that really likes to track and keep yourself accountable. Any of those reasons are a great reason to track and measure. However, if you're a person who's triggered by measuring and tracking and constantly having to think about food, then make it simple. Just don't do it. It really is that simple. As a fun fact though, in a study, they found that people that track and measure their food lose 2.5 times more weight than those people that don't track. And that's people that are not even on a special way of eating. So I think tracking has its place. It just may not be in the first 30 days, and that's totally fine. You will still heal your body. You will still get rid of the inflammation that you've been carrying around in your body for a long time, and that is healing in and of itself. And then if you have weight to lose, you will release the weight that you no longer need. Watch the rest of this video, get the concept, and then come back to it in a month or in two months because I know you're gonna do this diet longer than for 30 days, because you're gonna feel that amazing. And then you'll have all the information that you need. Either way you do it, I'm just trying to give you all the information. So let's get back to my regularly scheduled program. Thanks for watching.
In the previous video, I talked about how we're going to prioritize that protein and prioritize our fuels or our energy sources. In the example I used last time, and I'm just going to follow through with it because I have men and women on this channel, I'm trying to use kind of an average weight, which isn't easy. I am using the example of a 200 pound person that wants to get to an ideal body weight of 150. So we're using nice round numbers. We said that we're prioritizing the protein and the protein is one gram per pound of ideal body weight. And you're going to see, I'm going to put a lot of this on the screen today. That's just because I'm throwing out numbers. And for those of you that don't like all that stuff, bear with me. This is just going to give you a general guideline and you can calculate the heck out of it if you want to, or you can get a general idea. And either one is fine. These are just ways to help you. Things I didn't do when I was first on the plan. And I wished I had known some of these things because they do help you. So you're not constantly questioning, am I eating enough? Am I not eating enough? Why do I feel this way? Why don't I feel this way? We'll just hit all those things right out of the gate. And you guys will be more informed than the typical person or the person like me who decided to go on this diet during an RV trip because my husband was feeling so fantastic on it. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should try it. And so I just jumped in without having a lot of information. And that's not my personality. So when he said this diet is making him not hungry, I was like, okay, he's got energy, he had no aches and pains, and then he's not hungry. Like, what am I missing? Plus I'm watching him eat all this food. Like he's not eating like a little bit. He's eating meat, like steaks and ground beef and eggs and bacon. And he's putting butter on that stuff. And so I was like, wait a minute, I got to figure this out because he's feeling fabulous and losing weight. And I am eating whole food plant-based and not feeling so good. So here we are with this 150 grams of protein. And as I mentioned in the last video, that is not 150 grams of meat. So don't get nervous. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out what 150 grams or whatever your ideal body weight is. So determine what your ideal body weight is. If your ideal body weight is 200 pounds, then you need 200 grams of protein. If your ideal body weight is 120 pounds, then 120 grams is your ideal protein number. For this example, we're going to stay with this 150 grams. It's grams of protein, not grams of meat. So we'll need to calculate, and again, don't lose me here, but we're gonna calculate, just so you know, generally in the back of your head, how much you should be eating in a day. So for this 150 pound ideal body weight, 150 grams of protein looks like six eggs in the morning, Six eggs in the morning is 38 grams of protein. Four slices of bacon. Four slices of bacon are 16 grams of protein. A half a pound of ground beef for lunch, and that is 59 grams of protein. And for dinner, a six ounce ribeye steak, which is 42 grams of protein. So that comes out to 155 grams of protein. Now that's a little bit more than the 150. This is what you need as a minimum. One gram is a minimum. If you go slightly over it, you'll be okay. If you're always going way over it, you may not lose weight as quickly, but you might still get a lot of the other benefits. So you might still feel better and you might still have more energy and things along those lines. So just keep that in mind. Then we need to move on to our energy source, which is going to be the fats and carbs. Now this is a low carb plan, but just because the foods we're eating really don't have a lot of carbs in them. Again, we're eating foods that come from animals, fats that come from animals, and we're eating minimally processed foods. We are not getting things that come out of a box with 5,000 ingredients on the ingredient list. It's usually gonna say like meat and water or eggs or cream and salt and butter. We are still gonna read the ingredient list because you would be surprised what they put in some products. So we're gonna try and make sure that we have minimally processed and not a lot of added ingredients in the foods that we're eating. Let's see what that meal, what that looks like in terms of fats and carbs. Because as I mentioned, you want, if you want 150 grams of protein, you want about 150 grams of combined fats and carbs. It's a general idea. You can go a little bit higher and that's gonna be okay. When I calculate the fats and carbs in this, the six eggs have 29 grams of fats and two grams of carbs. The four slices of bacon have 16 grams of fat and one carb. And if they have a 0.1 or a 0.2, I just rounded to the nice numbers because it doesn't matter. And if it matters to you, that's fine. You can put those 0.2s and 0.3s 
go right ahead. This is going to be whatever you want to make of this. If you like to do all this calculating, if it gives you something and you like to do, you like to know exactly to the detail, go for it. If you are like, do not make me calculate anything, I've got you too. Just wait, hold on a second. I've got a way for you to do this without all this calculating but I just want to explain it to you so you understand why we're doing it this way. A half a pound of ground beef is 38 grams of fat and zero carbs. So meat in general is very low carb. You will find very few carbs in meats. There's a couple in eggs, but it's like a point something. But when you add it up to six eggs, you got two, two grams of carbs. When you add all those together, it's only 118 grams of fats and carbs together. So what does that mean? We're below where we need to be. Again, we want to be on the same ratio. So we want to have at least 150 grams of fats and carbs because that was what our protein profile looked like. What we would do to get there is add some fats. Fats, we want to get them from animals. So it's butter. And if you're dairy sensitive, then it would be ghee or beef tallow is a fantastic fat. It has very little taste. It's wonderful. I wouldn't have thought I would have ever liked beef tallow but I put it in all sorts of stuff. Let's talk about butter. One tablespoon of butter is 12 grams of fat, no carbs and no protein. There's like a 0.09, 12 grams of fat for one tablespoon. Well, let's put three tablespoons in our stuff throughout the day, at least. That would get us to 154 grams of fats and carbs. I would put probably four tablespoons because the fats are what are going to stabilize your hormones and the fats are what are gonna give you energy. So right now, especially at the beginning of this, we are going to get our bodies from using the easy carbs for energy because it's super easy for your body to break down carbs like instantaneous. Plus you eat a lot of carbs if you eat the standard American diet. And so your body is used to them and your body gets very efficient at stuff when they do it all the time. Fat, it takes your body a little bit more effort to convert that into fuel. So you may have a few days where you're gonna feel like, eh, kind of, I have a headache because I'm not having all my sugar. And you might feel a little less energy when your body is trying to convert over to using your fat for fuel. And it's gonna not only use the fat from your food, but if you have fat to lose, it's gonna use the fat from your body too. That's where we start to lose the weight. We're gonna add those fats and we can add the beef tallow to our ground beef, or we can add the butter, we can add butter to our eggs. And so things are going to be just tasty too. I would suggest that you do a food calculator. There's so many apps out there that are just on your phone and you just type it in and you may not need to do it more than the first couple of weeks because as humans, we get used to what we like. So as an example, I love ground beef. I love ground beef with butter in it. I eat that a lot. I also love a good ribeye. While I don't eat that every day, because it is a more expensive meat, I do eat ribeyes. So I know what the calculations are for a ribeye. And I love eggs. So I know what the calculations are for that. And there's bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? I have the calculations for that. I know what shrimp is. So I'll throw in shrimp. Shrimp are very low in fat. They have good protein. So if I'm eating more fat one day than protein, then I might throw in some shrimp. It also spices up my food a little bit when I could have something very different. Shrimp tastes very different than any kind of meat. I also love lamb. There's a few foods that I eat them. And so once I figured out what they were, after I looked at it a couple times, now I know what my calculations are. My fitness pal is fantastic. They have very, very good, reliable sources. Also, there's carb manager and I'll put links down below to some of the most popular ones. I have Carb Manager and I have my Fitness Pal. Most of the calculations I did for this video, I used nutritionix.com slash food. And that's just one on your computer that you can use. And that was just easy because I typed in bacon and it gave me the calculations. And, and then you can increase the number of slices and then you can decrease the number of slices. It's just super easy to use. Just pick what you want. The other thing if you just absolutely hate the idea of calculating anything and it maybe triggers you, maybe you cannot focus on food that much throughout the day. And there are people who cannot focus on food throughout the day and can't get to the level where they're calculating what they're eating and things like that. And if that's you, then listen to this. The palm of your hand, so just this part, is generally four ounces of meat. It wouldn't be like four ounces of mounded meat, but like think about the width of your palm and this, generally four ounces. If you use that as your calculator when you're trying to figure out what you're eating, you're having a burger that is about the size of your palm. It's probably a four ounce burger. Figure out what a four ounce burger is one time and then you'll just know. 
figure out what a four ounce piece of steak looks like. You can do some general calculating. The only thing that you don't wanna be doing is eating less than your body needs. And that is something that, and I don't wanna differentiate us, but a lot of women have had it in their minds that they have to eat such a small amount of food to either maintain or lose weight that it has completely distorted our idea of what is healthy. It is enlightening to calculate what a day actually should look like from a food perspective. When I gave the example in the video from the other day, six eggs, four slices of bacon, a half a pound of meat for lunch, and six ounces of a ribeye steak for dinner. There's a lot of you out there that goes, there's no way that I can eat all that and not gain like a million pounds. I'm telling you, by cutting out all the carbs and all the processed crap that we eat, it is going to make you feel amazing. Your hormones are gonna get balanced. You're gonna heal a lot of stuff that you didn't even know was wrong with you. And your aches and pains are gonna go away and you're gonna feel more energy once your body switches to using fat for fuel. I think that's enough for today. Please comment if you have questions because I know you'll have questions and I've done it for a year. My husband has done it and I have done just a boatload of research. I have watched all the carnivore doctors that are out there. Again, I list all their information in the description box below so you can do some research. I've read multiple books. So I just wanna share it with you because my whole channel is about getting the most joy out of life that I can get and sharing it with you so that you can get it too. Carnivore makes me feel good. Carnivore helped me lose 30 pounds. Carnivore has people telling me I look way younger than my 50 something age that I am. And a year later, my blood work was phenomenal. My doctor was like, keep doing it, girl. Like whatever you're doing, do it. My husband's A1C went from 11 something to 5.2 is his average. And his doctor said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. My cholesterol was not through the roof. Like you probably think if I'm eating six eggs a day, like what, what's my cholesterol look like? If I'm eating fatty ribeye, what are my cholesterol? Don't worry. Cholesterol, number one, is not too bad for you. And number two, your good cholesterol is going to go up and your bad cholesterol is going to go down. This is way better than you could even imagine. Stay tuned for our next prep talk. And then I'm going to go into some of the stumbling blocks that you can run into. Um, what happens if you fall off the wagon? What if you have naysayers? We're going to talk through a lot of those. And I'm going to have a Q&A prep talk as well. So we've got so much still to talk about. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Meanwhile, check in with your doctors. Make sure you're good to go. Keep doing that research. Look at some of the links I have in my description box. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. And also click the like button if you liked this video and if you found it helpful. And then if you hit that little bell, that's a notification bell. And then you get a little notification that says, Gentastic Journey has a new video out. And you could go in and check it out. And it'll probably be one of these prep talks or a card crafting video or dog health video, an RV video, you never know. But in either case, you'll know quickly and you can decide if you wanna watch it. But definitely watch the next prep talk on this carnivore challenge and I look forward to seeing you in that video.